folks. Uh, this is T with Mountain Readiness, and we are going to do another educator spotlight here. So today, um, there is really no introduction that I can do for this, this man um, that would justify the years of investment that he has put into fighting for Americans' freedoms. Uh, accomplished author, founder of the North Carolina Grassroots, over 28 years of uh, doing battle there on the front lines with the leftist woke socialists that are continue to try to take over this great country. Um, and that's just the, the tip of the iceberg. Welcome, uh, Mr. Paul Ballone. Thank you very much for having me, sir. Definitely. So that, all that and, and, and much more, what, what do you do in your spare time, Paul? <laughs> Fortunately, I'm retired now, so I've got a little bit more time to work with. Um, but uh, yeah, between running gun rights organizations and uh, doing seminars for people to help them defeat the left, yeah, it it, uh, it keeps me busy. Your your plate is full. There's no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> so so we'll jump in here. You're going to be doing a couple classes here at our expo there in May, and. Um, you know, the first class being gun laws for preppers, getting ready, not arrested. Um, you literally helped write the book on a lot of the, the laws concerning, you know, con uh, concealed carry, caster doctrine, uh, stand your ground, et cetera, et cetera. Um, to me, as a concealed carry Second Amendment supporter, this class rates right up there at the top for me, uh, a real must. Um, can you go into a little bit more about what people will get out of this class? Absolutely. Um, and you're right. Uh, Grassroots North Carolina passed a, has passed a number of uh, pieces of gun re related legislation, including the concealed uh, carry um, system, including castle doctrine, stand your ground, uh, concealed handgun reciprocity, the purchase permit bypass, um, and a bunch of enhancements to concealed, the concealed handgun law. So when I do a seminar on gun laws, I usually start by asking how many people routinely carry firearms. And needless to say, most of the class raises their hand. And I say, then I say, welcome to the Sunday morning meeting of Felons Anonymous. My name is Paul Vallone, and I'm a felon, and so are you. And the reason I say that is that there are so many arcane gun laws that you cannot leave your home without breaking one. Now, <clears throat> most of those go unprosecuted. <clears throat> except maybe during the Biden administration. <clears throat> but um, <clears throat> the fact remains that um, you are unwittingly breaking the law. And if you don't know what laws you are breaking, you can easily wind up in jail or prison, actually. Um, and of course, the ATF has not made things any easier because they have now started, on, under the current administration, they've started promulgating rules and literally trying to write laws from the executive branch, which of course is a violation of article one, section one of the constitution, but they don't care. Um, so things that you always did that were legal might not be legal tomorrow. And, you know, the pistol stabilizing brace being a big issue. And we're going to talk about that extensively in this sem seminar, because that is a huge gotcha that has come down the pipe from the ATF, which of course has decided to reverse its previous position on um, pistol st stabilizing braces for AR-15 style pistols, where formerly they had said they were legal, even if you did put, to, put them to your shoulder and use it as an improvised stock. Now they are saying that uh, essentially almost all of these, they're considering now to be short-barreled rifles, which have to be regulated under the 1934 National Firearms Act. This is about the third piece of rulemaking that has come down the pipe from the ETF on stuff like this. Then complicating the fact, um, <clears throat> we have, for example, the uh, uh, bump stock ban. Um, the bump stock ban has been upheld in three circuits of the Court of Appeals and struck down in the fourth. And I'm happy to say we were on the amicus brief that helped get that struck down in the uh, in the fifth the uh, fifth circuit uh, and so hopefully the supreme court will take that up 
But part of the reason they struck it down is exactly what the ATF is doing again, and that's trying to make write laws that it should properly be the purview of Congress. So the, the bottom line is we'll go through some of these laws, both for North Carolina and for federal law. And so it does apply to people that from outside the state as well. So um, we hope to um, um, open people's eyes a little bit on this one. Sounds awesome. Um, we're really looking forward to that. And uh, I think it, I think it's really important. I mean, uh, they, they roll out rules and regulations faster than than we can keep up with them. You know, what states are we allowed to go go into, whatnot. Um, super important stuff. I know we are you're also going to do a class that is um, projecting power and politics. Now, this class here is this this goes right along with your book, Rules for the Anti-Radicals, a practical handgun for defecting de defeating leftism, correct? This is kind of uh, a class based hand, off of that book. Handbook for defeating leftism. I haven't gone to handguns yet. Uh, oh, wait a second. But, um, We're talking about I get so excited <laughs> about guns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah get so excited no, that's about good. guns that that we just All drifted good. right into into that you know pardon me everything yeah um the handbook mm -hmm. uh which well, with the things that you've been doing i mean that's that that's the uh uh that's a sword in the right hand right so so uh um yeah i would agree exactly so so give us something on that what is that what are you and i know uh you go into hoas a lot uh, a lot I've been hearing here recently is, is uh, people, you know, fighting with HOAs, with uh, trying to have gardens and and uh, raising chickens, et cetera. Yep. So, so go ahead. Well, basically, um, about a year and a half ago, I started looking for a book of tactics for my volunteers to help them defeat the left. Okay, both in gun rights and on other issues. And I found books on, you know, political treatises on how evil Marxism is. And I found, you know, um, a, a variety of, of doctrinal sorts of things. But what I didn't find was a, a nuts and bolts book of tactics, how you can defeat the left, not just in politics, but in daily life. And the bottom line is that we don't often, we often don't realize how, the people try to control you in your life. It could be your HOA, as you mentioned. It could be your city council. It could be your county commission. It could be your school board. That's a real big battleground right now. And uh, but the, the variety, the, the fact is, people are trying to control you in daily life, and they use a number of methods to control you. Um, some of these methods are verbal. Some of them are 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 tactical. But uh, a guy named uh, Saul Alinsky back in 1972, wrote a book called Rules for Radicals. And basically, uh, his 13 Rules for Radicals have become the playbook for the left as it takes over, socialists basically, as they're taking over our cultural institutions, our media, and our schools. And most people don't realize that that has been a multi-generational effort to do that. Uh, it was actually started in the 1930s by a Marxist intellectual in Europe named Antonio Gramsci, and he created what eventually became known as the long march through the institutions, and that is that multi-generational effort to take over the media, the cultural institutions, and schools. That's largely worked. So the, the bottom line is that uh, I, mm. I divided the book into three sections. The first is boot camp for conservatives, and it basically tells people how we got to where we are today. The second part of, uh, the, and again, the book is called Rules for Anti-Radicals, uh, the playbook, uh, uh, the, I guess it's a play on Saul Alinsky's title. But in any case, part two of the book is tools and tactics. <clears throat> How you, for example, if you wind up in an argument or a, a debate with some uh, leftist, and it could be not just a formal debate, but even a discussion at a bar or something, you know, discussion at a church, um, it teaches you how to avoid the tricks that are being played on you. And so the tools and tactics in, in daily life. And frankly, if somebody wants to become more involved, uh, I teach them that they basically you can divide activism into four categories, economic action, activism, like against corporations. Now, 
For example, we've got these corporations adopting ESG, environmental and social governance policies, basically getting you as the shareholder to fund left-wing projects. That's what they're doing. Uh, the next type of action would be uh, political action, which could be either legislative, like what we do at the General Assembly and passing laws, or it could be election action. And the election action is, is kind of interesting. I had a um, couple of my um, volunteers who took my book, created a political action committee, and took out two sitting county commissioners right here in North Carolina. Okay, so this stuff amazing. Works. <laughs> then the next, uh, the next venue would be yeah, the next venue would be uh, legal action, and uh, that would be basically litigation for public policy. For example, right now we're suing the sheriff of Mecklenburg County the second time because he refuses to issue uh, concealed handgun permits on a timely basis. And then the fourth type of action is a catch-all I call non-legislative. And basically, that's things like um, protests and uh, public demonstrations and other things to support the first three types of, of action. So the bottom line is that anybody who's sick of getting beaten down by the woke mob will find a benefit in the seminar. Um, and uh, that's exactly what, you know, projecting power in politics is all about. And it's, you know, the politics may be in your daily life. It doesn't mean you have to be a dedicated political activist. And it, I've designed this to apply to virtually anyone who wants to basically um, control their own life. I mean, think about what's right. being done to students right now in schools. The LGBTQIA plus agenda, for example, um, right now, We've got this in North Carolina. We've got this uh, parental rights bill that has just been introduced, which is a fine piece of legislation. But I guarantee you the left is going to fight that tooth and nail. They're already misnaming it the don't say gay bill like they tried to do in Florida. So right. um, <clears throat> this stuff is, is of, of value for parents. It's of value for, as I say, even in, in an HOA. I'm happy to say I'm the president of my HOA because I've used some of these tactics. And um, <laughs> so um, the stuff works. Hey, we're looking, we're looking forward to it. And, and folks, if you think that this just doesn't apply to you, if, if it doesn't yet, it will, uh, because it's coming. It gets worse and worse every day, it seems like. So, um, Paul, uh, we can't wait to have you. There I, I did forget one. I did forget one thing. Yeah. One, one more thing. I forgot. I forgot my small moment of shameless self-promotion. They can find the book <laughs> at rulesforantiradicals.com. Rulesforantiradicals.com. Now I'm done with awesome. my shameless promotion <laughs> for, hey for sure and and everybody check the links below we're going to drop all those there um at the end of the video as well so we'll put that you know links for your book uh links to mountain readiness classes of course that you're going to do on your website um i think uh all you got time for a joke sure sure absolutely so um <laughs> there's there's a father and uh, this father, his son is, is coming of age to, to go out on his own. And he, uh, the father is worried about what his son's going to do with his life. So he, uh, he decides to put a couple items on his son's nightstand. He puts a, a bottle of whiskey, um, a silver dollar, and, and the Bible. And, of course, he, uh, <clears throat> he says, you know, when my son comes in, if he drinks the whiskey, um, his life's going to be ruined. He's going to be a drunkard. Um, if he, if he takes the silver dollar, he's going to be a successful businessman. Uh, and if he, if he takes the Bible, of course, uh, he's going to be a man of the cloth, live a good life. So um, the father hides in the closet, keeps the door open. Um, the son comes back in and he walks over to the end table. He, uh, he grabs the, the silver dollar, throws it in his pocket. <clears throat> he uh, grabs the Bible, puts it under his, his arm takes a big swig of whiskey, walks out. Father said, oh no, my son's going to be a politician. <laughs> that's cute. I'll remember that. I'm going to plagiarize that. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. There's no patent on that. Uh, talking about all these politics and stuff, I had, I had to throw that in there. But all jokes aside, Paul, you've been fighting the good fight for a long time. And thank you for your continued efforts to uh, to fight for the rights of, of America. Um, I commend you, and we just really appreciate you being being a part of our event, May 5th, 6th, and 7th. Um, God bless, sir. Take care, and uh, can't wait to see you. And I thank you for helping uh, spread the word and get some of this stuff out. We very, 
very much appreciate your efforts. For sure. For sure. Uh, folks, this is T signing off. Um, as always, pray for the best, prepare for the worst. We'll see you at the uh, the expo in May. Thanks. Right up.